Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Zoom on the Fly. Tonight, Fred Dupre is going to use a laptop and webcams in a presentation that he calls Doing It on the Cheap. We're going to find out just what he means by that. Good evening. We're the Beaties from Boise, Idaho. And joining us tonight is our friend, Fred Dupre. You can see him right there beside us in the screen. Let me read a brief introduction of Fred. Fred is a retired telephone company employee who has been tying flies for the past 62 years. He has been recognized for his skill at the Fly Tying Vice with the Buzz Busey Award, Dick Nelson Fly Tying Teaching Award, and has earned the Bronze, Silver, and Gold Flying tie, Fly Tying Skills Award. Fred is also one of the few people who is an evaluator for all three skill levels. He is a longtime tying teacher and demonstrator with a string of expos, shows, and conclaves to his credit. He is currently the treasurer for the FFI Fly Tying Group and is on their executive board. And Fred, we wanted to, wanted to welcome you tonight and uh, also advise everyone that you're the chair of the, of the FFI Expo in, um, November. In, in November. The Fly Tying Chair. Fly Tying Chair. That's Fly Tying right. Chair. Fly Tying Chair. And, Fred, you may as well explain it all yourself if you've got the chair. Well, let's just talk a little bit about the uh, expo <laughs> in November. It's, I believe it's the 14th, 15th, and 16th. I've checked my calendar. Fourth, fifth, uh, and sixth. What's that? Four, five, and six. Four, five, and six. I knew I had a four in there. Uh, four, uh, November 4th, 5th, and 6th. And um, I'm the fly tying chair. And if you're interested in uh, tying at that expo, uh, please uh, send me an email and I will send you an invitation. You need to uh, have a, I think Al has gone through it already, uh, have a sufficient uh, bandwidth for your internet and a camera. And I'm going to go through a webcam tonight, use of a webcam. But I think Al went through a, a cell phone uh, last week. So, uh, uh, and there's all, all kinds of other cameras you can use. If you, uh, if you have any questions, email me and I will, we'll talk about it or I can send you an invite. Um, tonight, we're going to talk about uh, something I, I just kind of fell into, to be honest with you. It was a situation where five years ago, I moved from Arkansas, the banks of the White River, uh, to uh, Georgetown, Texas. And um, I live in a retirement community called Sun City. And so I started a, um, uh, an FFI club here. And I also started a fly tying group. Uh, my fly tying group meets every Monday night from uh, uh, seven to nine. And uh, there's normally anywhere between eight to 12 students. I've kind of capped it off. But when we started five years ago, um, I had to figure out, because I'm not a real techie guy, to be honest with you, I had to figure out, you know, how, how am I going to project um, my tying uh, steps up on the large screen there I had in the room? And I went out and bought a document camera. And uh, unfortunately, that document camera does not have enough megapixels to give you a, a real good, clear shot at uh, projecting it up on a screen. So I went from that to a, um, uh, a, a webcam and I bought several webcams, uh, trial and error. And uh, unfortunately I bought uh, uh, a couple that didn't work uh, well. And I finally settled on a webcam that has a, uh, a manual focus. The uh, Webcams that have autofocus, uh, you're going to have some difficulty uh, keeping focus on the fly as you move your hands around the fly. So tonight we're going to show you a manual focus. Um, by the way, uh, in 2020, 2020, this come, came in really handy with my fly tying group um, because we couldn't meet anymore in person. So I basically had a figure out Zoom, and, uh, and we had Zoom tying classes. Um, and uh, for the next 
uh, two and a half years. And uh, today we've switched back to meeting in person, and uh, but I still use this webcam and uh, to project up on a screen. Um, this webcam, and I'll show you show you what it looks like, is one right out of the box, and it uh, it has a, a uh, tripod that you can extend the little legs on it. And um, it's a manual focus. And all you do is adjust the focus and, and uh, to make sure it comes in nice and sharp in your screen. Um, they were selling these oh, four, five years ago for around $35. The last batch I bought were, uh, were like uh, $18. And uh, I've given away several of these. The um, the eighteen dollars were ones that were shipped to somebody and they didn't use it. and They sent it back, so they they claimed it was uh, reclaimed or whatever. But they all work. So uh, I now have you know three in the house and three of the same kind. So uh, again, if you uh, have any questions about these little cameras, shoot me an email. My email address is if you. You got a paper and pencil. It is uh, flytirefred at gmail.com. That's F L Y T Y E R F R E D at gmail.com. So um, let me just kind of show you the setup I have. Um, when we moved from Arkansas to, to uh, Texas, we went from about 5,000 square foot house to about a 1,700 square foot house. So I do not have my own fly tying room. I had tie flies in the kitchen. This is my wife's sewing room. And um, so let me just kind of switch the webcam around. This is the fly we're going to tie tonight, but I'm going to move my webcam around so you can see what's happening. I've got, you know, my laptop right in front of me. And around here, in the back side of the laptop, I have another camera pointed at the um, the pattern sheet, and I have a a light above, lighting above. And then I was showing now I have a little dollar light, LED light that I just put on the on the table right below the fly. Okay, the first. Anybody have any questions before I get started on tying a fly? Okay. Also yeah. behind the fly, I have a... Uh, I do have a question. Sure. Um, what brand name is the camera? It is. I don't think of any more. Uh, oh, I'm looking... called Stream Webcam. It's from China. But if you, I would suggest you just go on, I went on Amazon and you look for any um, webcam that is manual focus. Okay. And you're gonna have to really, you know, uh, dig deep because there's very few of them being sold as manual focus. Most of them are autofocus. I'll also add one comment, Fred, because I bought some of the manual focus myself. I bought two of them off of eBay that looked like all the rest of them in the picture. But I said, darn, they only want $12 for them. What a deal. What a deal was is they, uh, they would work, but uh, you couldn't see anything. I mean, you may as well had a Coke bottle for the, for the lens. It was really bad. So if you're not paying somewhere in the 18 to $20 range, maybe you want to rethink your purchase. Right. Let me let me go back here. Uh, yeah. Another thing is lens wipes. Um, it's easy to get your fingers on the on the lenses on these little cameras, and so I would suggest you, you know, clean off your lenses on the cameras and on your laptop. You'd be amazed on your laptop how many times you put your thumb up at the top you know, to close your or open your laptop 
and you uh, grease up your camera lens up there. Up there. So, um, yeah, the fly we're going to tie tonight is a real bandito. Um, it was designed by Chris Johnson. Chris Johnson is the owner of Living Waters Fly Shop in uh, Round Rock, Texas. Um, we have a fish down here in our rivers and, and uh, creeks. By the way, our rivers and creeks are uh, super clear. And um, so you really have to stock fish. One of these fish is a um, Rio grand cichlid and essentially these are fish that you can buy at a uh, fish store and go in your aquarium people have dumped their aquariums in the rivers and streams around here and these fish have evidently have taken off these uh same rios you can catch them in new orleans and houston uh florida they're all over the place um they're sort of a Neat fish are like a bluegill on steroids. Um, and when you fish this fly, uh, you side cast to them. And so you look for one or more rios together, and then you cast past them and slowly, slowly drag the fly into its vision. And just then once it's there, you just let it sit. There, there have been times when I've let it sit for two or three minutes before the fish actually took it. So uh, they just don't go out there and, you know, like, like a bluegill, uh, gobble it up. They, they'll, they'll look at it for some time. So, so if you've got a uh, cell phone, you might want to take a picture of this pattern sheet. So I have basically my camera, the fly, and then behind it, like Al did last week, I have a piece of foam board. In my case, it's a it's a very light aqua blue, and it's a background. So this Freddy's is the fly we're going to try tonight, the uh, Rio Bandito. First thing to do is uh, the hook is a TMC. 403 BJT size 12. And the thread I'm going to use tonight is a UTC 70 denier uh, burnt orange. So I've already got the, uh, the bead on the hook. It's a slotted bead. And I'm going to wrap it back to this point right there near the, the hook point. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some uh, Australian possum. This is Australian possum. Nothing like the possum we have here in the United States. It has a beautiful pelt. Uh, and I'm going to take a off camera, take a little bit of that with, with the guard hairs. Here's a chunk of it. Then I'll pull the under fur out, set it aside. Because we're going to use some of the under fur later on. And I'm going to pull. And one thing about this fly, you don't want to have a tail too long because these fish are short strikers. And you want it the tail to be about, about the length of the hook shank. Next, we're going to use uh, some silly legs. And this is a pumpkin color, silly legs. 
It's basically rubber legs. And you're going to fold the length of it in half. And tie it on top. And then you're going to move your legs to the sides. And then remove the waist. Then I'm going to trim these legs to about the length of the tail. Tie it down a little bit more. There you go. Okay. Um, for the body, we're going to use Australian possum underfur with some guard hair. So I'm going to uh, flatten my thread out by spinning it counterclockwise. And I'm going to split the thread. There we go. Then I'm going to, off camera, cut some more Australian possum. And I'm going to take some of the, that fur that I had before that we took off the bottom, the under fur, mix it around. and place in the split thread. Then I'm gonna take some guard hairs And also place them in the split thread. And I'm going to cut the bottom off of those guard hairs. And then I'm going to take my thread and then spin the bobbin. Then it's more, tighten it up. And okay, let me shorten my thread. Then I'm gonna bring this in the back and start wrapping forward. When I get up the front, I'm going to start pulling those fibers back. Any loose ones, pull them out with your fingers. Um, And essentially that, that is the fly. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna whip finish this thing off and then I'm gonna give it a trim. Because this fly is designed to go upside down. And so I'm gonna trim the bottom of the fly, which is the top part in the vise. Just like that. So the fly floats just like this. And that is the real bandito.
Okay. The next fly is uh, called a carpet bomb. <clears throat> and this fly was designed by Matt Bennett. Matt used to uh, work in the Living Waters fly shop. He was one of their fly designers. And uh, this fly uses a Gamagatsu SL45 size 4, 70 to near chartreuse thread, uh, large B chain black for the, uh, the head. The tail is uh, olive brown marabou. Legs are using barred root beer again. Uh, dubbing is Cohen's carp dub, olive barred. And there, there's a, a wing, uh, which will be olive brown marabou and Cohen's carp dubbing over the marabou. This is what this fly looks like. It, uh, it rides like this, hook point up. A lot of the flies we use down here are, um, we design them to ride hook point up. So they would be semi weedless. This was, um, uh, designed as a carp fly. It has turned out to be uh, uh, a bass fly as well in our uh, rivers and creeks, as well as a bluegill fly. By the way, the prior fly, the Rio Bandito we tied, it's one hell of a, a bluegill fly. But this was originally designed as a carp fly, but is it's a deadly um, uh, bass fly as well. So, okay, I'm going to start out with a Yamagatsu size four, and we're going to be using uh, chartreuse 70 to near thread. And I'm just going to put a thread base down right to the bend and come back up. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put it into the beaching, the eyes. And the way I like to do bead chain, I'll just set it sort of diagonally on top of the hook shank. And I'll do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Wraps one way, then pull it back. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The other way, and then I'll do underlying wraps to tighten it up, and then advance my thread to the rear. And then I will either put super glue or some type of varnish lacquer on the thread wraps so they won't move on you. Stop me if you guys have any questions. Okay, um, we're gonna be using some olive brown marabou for the tail. Again, the tail is gonna be about the length of the hook shank. And I'm gonna tie down on the marabou, create a little bit of bolt to the body. And then I'm gonna add some ribbing wire, which is not in the uh, pattern sheet, but I like to do it just to hold the fly together. It's my little variation of Matt Bennett's pattern. So I use some chartreuse ribbing wire, tie that in. We've got this fly has a lot of legs. You're going to have two on each side in the rear and two on each side on the front. I'm 
dot two over there. And my tattoo two on this side. Notice I'll leave a little loop there. Um, that loop allows me to hold on to it if I need to move it around. Um, and it also allows me to pick it up and cut the waist. So I've got four set two on each side. I take all four of them together. Pull them back, and then I'm going to trim them. Okay. Next, we're going to do a, uh, you know, the other the first slide, we did a split thread dubbing technique. This, this slide, we're going to just do a dubbing loop. So I make a loop. And I put a dubbing twister at the bottom. And then I go and pull out some of this Cohen's carp dub. It has little, it has um, rubber legs inside of it. So it's kind of unique. So I'm gonna put several pieces of uh, carp dub and and then I'm gonna spin my And try to keep the legs out. Then I'm going to basically wrap the body. Move, advance my thread up to the front. And this is a little thick body. And then I'm going to come back here and tie it off. And then remove the waist. Next step is I'm going to take my Chartreuse wire, ribbing wire, and I'm a counter wrap. And that should do it. Now I'm going to trim it a little bit. There's some things sticking out that I don't want sticking out. There you go. And then you're going to turn this upside down. Let me see. Hold on a second. Let me go back the other way. So I'm going to put some legs on there next. And then these are legs on both sides. Two legs. Two on that side. And two on this side. And I'll 
I'll trim that. And I'm going to pull the legs back and trim them the length of the tail, like that. Now, I'm going to turn it upside down. This is the way the, the fly rides. And the first thing I'm going to put in there is some, some marabou, sort of a, a beard. It's going to cover sort of the hook point. A little pinch wrap, tie it down, and remove the waist. And then one more material. I'm going to take some more of this carp dub. And we're going to take a small piece of it and we're going to align it to so where line all the fibers by pulling it and lining them. There we go. And we're going to put that piece right here. And then Pull this other piece back over it. And then tie ahead. Now we're going to do an Al Beatty uh, flip finish. Start the back. And you go forward. And there's the fly. Anybody have any questions? The way you fish this is uh, if you're fishing for carp, again, carp for us down here in Texas is like uh, freshwater bonefish. And uh, you don't blind cast for carp. You uh, actually find them you know, swimming in shallow water anywhere up to a knee deep type water. Um, and then you cast it uh, slightly past it in front of it and you pull it very slowly, much like the uh, Rio Bandito. And, uh, and you just let it sit there. And if he doesn't take it right then and there, then you just make a little short strip and uh, then you've got him, okay? Anybody have any questions? Not a question, but I'll guarantee you, you might call that a carp fly. But when we lived in Montana, I'd pound the banks for brown trout with that any day of the week. Well, that, 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 we haven't done that yet down here. So not too many brown trout. In Texas. I can tell you one of the funny things about the, the, the trout in Montana as compared to Idaho. When we lived in Montana, if you didn't have rubber legs on, you weren't fishing. And there you then, go. And then along comes a, a move to Idaho. And if you got rubber legs on, you scare them into the next county. So <laughs> depends on Who where knows, you live. Right. right. Are you uh, are you ready for the spotlight to come off? Or are you uh, Yep, I'm done. Good job. Uh, to answer your questions. By the way, one of the things that we want to use as a learning moment is to um, maybe John Wright can help us because he's a computer. He, he works on computers for his day job. And uh, you were having some trouble with your cameras tonight. Maybe he has some thoughts about USB ports that he started to talk about a minute ago. Yeah, I suspect, and I can't prove it yet, but um, I am suspecting that. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Okay. Yeah. I suspect that it's getting a, a data overload in those USB ports. Um, I think that the webcams are driving it, especially the older USB one and USB two ports. 
they get data limited and you could very easily be overdriving it. And when that happens, they just, the camera just shuts down. Um, a lot of it has to do with the cameras as I've found. And one thing I don't understand, I haven't figured it out yet. I've got USB three ports on my computer, but yet when I plug a USB two um, device into it, it drops itself back down to a USB two speed. So no matter what I do, it's it. So um, that's, that's a guess on my part, purely guess. I have no empirical data to back that up, but that's what I think is happening. Yeah, John, I, you, these cameras have just the regular USB ports. Yeah, um, yeah. The laptop I'm using is a fairly new laptop. It's only about six months old, Laverna, L L Lenovo. Lenovo, so, IBM, yeah. Yep. John, could you talk about the difference in the USB 1, 2, and 3 and how we can determine what we've got? Yeah, it's, it's pretty easy on the everything. The, the three got it has, it has a blue port. And I don't have one handy with me right here. But yeah, if you look at the port on your computer, if you see a little, you know, all the USBs have a little like a plastic tab in it that you that fits into your plug. Right. Um, the ones that are white are two. The ones that are blue are three. And the big difference between them is really the, uh, the speed. Uh, the USB three is up. I don't have my notes with me, but it's about four or five times faster than a two. And hmm. technically you should be able to drive two cameras on a USB three, but I have yet to have that success. Uh, oh, this, I'm running this, into the same problem that Al's running into with two of them. Yeah, here's two USBs. Yeah, that's the mail port that goes into the, the connection on your, the one in the, on the white one is a USB-C connector. Okay, is that better That's, than the, the other one? It's just a different interface. Okay. Uh, it's smaller and it's, it's a little more universal. Uh, it'll fit either way, unlike the old ones. But uh. well, So I have a question. It's going back a session, but, you know, we tr used the cell phone. <laughs> And as, a, as the media, and I thought the, the imagery was quite good, you know, the focus and everything. And so the question is, could you actually set up and run two cell phones, you know, like mine and my wife's, and get uh, Zoom, you know, download onto your two cell phones and then use one for the on the fly and the other one to look at yourself, just like you do with a computer, but you wouldn't need the computer necessarily. Is that a, is that a realistic approach could you do that yes yeah it is and and in fact um, there's a fellow that's a neighbor of fred's at least when i say a neighbor he lives in texas city um and he makes a presentation name is ron mayfield and he makes a presentation where he has um um three different uh, set up with different three a laptop and uh, sometimes it's two cell phones and sometimes it's a cell phone and a nikon and um and he sets them up just like we did last week, individual connections. Yeah, and Mike Kelly does the same thing. He uses an iPhone and an iPad. <clears throat> uh, the iPad he uses for his materials and the iPhone he puts on the, uh, on the fly. So there's a million different ways to do this stuff. Boy, I tell you, it's amazing. Yeah, what's, uh, what's nice about this is you can practice this. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can, uh, uh, the way I do it, I just, hook them all up to my laptop and I uh, uh, press uh, Windows P and um, and then put, you know, uh, duplicate devices and then uh, and then uh, go down to Windows and hit camera and then uh, click on the camera and you now have a, it's, it's all set up so you can practice to your heart's content as many cameras as you want, or you can just uh, start your own little Zoom session like Al did the other day and, um, uh, and, and practice on that. That's what I've been doing. So I had to do that to, to, to practice before I got on with Al because I, I didn't want to screw up. So, <laughs> uh, Fred, Fred, a question. Sure. What was your distance between your your webcam and your vice? Uh, I'm looking at it right now. I'm sorry. Six inches. <clears throat> Anybody else out there that uses a frontal camera? 
what distance do y'all typically, what kind of clearance do y'all have between the, the camera and the, the vice? Yeah, I do too. And it's, uh, with my camera, I have to keep it up pretty close, about an inch and a half. And I can show you what that looks like. Wow. Uh, there it is right there. That's my USB cam hooked up uh, at, and looking at my vice. And I keep it on the other side just because uh, it's a manual focus camera as Fred recommended. And I, I really like the manual focus. So. Okay, so you're not working around it. No, I'm not. I tried that with an iPhone. And although the iPhone gives an amazing picture, the bulk is just uh, too big for me to work around. I got my, my big fat fingers won't keep hitting the camera. So. Um, I just checked mine. And in fact, this one right there, I'm five and a quarter inches behind it. We, we, that's the front of the lens, you know, and that's the Nikon. So it's a, the yeah. lens is what's sticking out there and, and I have to work around the lens and that's, and that's what it is. David, there's my frontal camera. I'm about eight inches out, but I use a macro lens. <laughs> yeah. And that's well, what I'm, but I only, but I only paid $20 for my camera. <laughs> if you use the zoom on their, on your phone, uh, you know, you could probably get back, you know, eight inches maybe and still, not lose the fidelity of the pixels, I don't think, but I'm not sure that. I think you're right, but I've that's got an iPhone I, 6. That's so. what I did last week, Chuck. Okay. Yeah. Will Bush I think the newer iPhones will let you do that real well. My old iPhone 6 won't. Uh, <clears throat> Will Bush uses an iPhone 12, and it's some of the best quality video I've seen. Yeah. Yeah, that's what Mike Kelly's using, and it's, it's amazing. Well, there's uh, no other comments or questions. The Again, next... if you, anybody's interested in tying at the, uh, the virtual expo, uh, send me an email, flytirefred at gmail.com. And if anyone wants to practice with someone before they contact Fred and go through the uh, evaluation process with him, Right. You all got my email address and I'm here through the day and more than willing to work with anybody that wants to get tuned up for the virtual expo. And if nothing else for this week, next week, we're going to be more into a discussion format. I'll, uh, I don't know what I'm going to do yet, but we'll, we'll tie a fly <laughs> just to call it a fly tying zoom presentation. Uh, we'll, we'll tie something, but what we'll end up doing is uh, discussing equipment. John Wright's going to start out by talking about Raspberry Pi, and it's not the stuff that you put whipped cream on, I can tell you that right now. And, um, and David Buckner is going to talk about using GoPros and some of the challenges of getting started with the GoPro. And then I'm going to be going over a whole myriad of equipment that I've tried, and some worked and some didn't. And maybe I can point you in some directions not to go and some directions that you might want to go. For example, I'm using a switcher right now, similar to what Jack Gillis has, except mine is the baby version of his Papa version. But had I had this, I would not have, to have had to purchase a $1,600 gaming computer um, a couple of years ago. I could have bought this $500 attachment to a regular computer. But when you don't know, you don't know, and you you do what you got to do. So now I got both. Uh, so I'm in, I'm in good shape. But yeah. bottom line is there's some things you could spend money. Another thing is an Elgato cam link. We'll talk about those next week. But yes. it, can, can it cost about $100. And you can get a really good, good one that does the same job for about $25. Yeah, yeah that, the fly I got in the vice now is about it's three inches away. Three inches, you said? Yeah, and that's a fixed. Okay. Yep, three inches. That's pretty close if you're trying to make a, a long wrap of, of dub thread or something. Yeah, you, sometimes you have to put your finger in there and make an L shape to get it around there. Yeah, yeah, I understand. <laughs> I had to do that too. It's hard on dubbing loops. Yeah, for sure. Anything else, guys? Yeah, uh, this is Michael uh, for... Al and Fred, uh, I, I do a, a fly tying 
session once a week for Sierra Pacific fly fishing. And we, we're we both in person and on Zoom. We simulcast and uh, use a totally different setup that I'll, I'll send to the two of you and uh, there, see what you think. Uh, Michael, please do um, in detail if you can. We'll cover it next week. Um, are you going to be signing in next week? Uh, if if I'm yeah if 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 I'm nearby, I will. Well, if you can, great. If not, we'll have your data and we'll give you credit for it and and, and sh tell everybody how you're getting all hooked up. So, you know, I, I'm Fred's using a. Um, a couple of webcams, and I'm using a, a couple of Nikons. So it's a whole lot of different things that can that you can do. And I think Jack Gillis has got about eight cameras down there in his studio, <laughs> all hooked up. And I, are they all Sony's, Jack? Uh, no, I've got a couple of Nikons, uh, two or three Sonys, and then a couple of webcam, uh, handy cams, the Sony's. Handy cams, okay. Yeah, that's what I'm using is handy cam. What else is he has a couple of cameras? That is understated. <laughs> well, I've got six hooked up Makes right fun now. Of my age. So. I've got just as many. <laughs> anyway, guys, next week, uh, same time, same station. It'll be the last one. Remember, I'm here for anybody that wants to practice before they go for the actual evaluation from Fred. And Fred's got something he wants to show us. Let me spotlight Fred. Yeah. Just a minute here. Spotlight. I forgot to show this to y'all. Okay, spotlight. Here you go, Fred. Uh when I have the camera pointing toward me uh, and you're using your shirt as the background, uh, I, I used to have to worry to in, in wear a shirt that's muted like this one. But uh, I threw this in my uh, fly tying kit. It's a, uh, <laughs> you can just, it's a bib. Like an old person's bib. <laughs> oh, we are old school. people, Fred. What are you talking about? I thought that was a breakfast bib. <laughs> oh, okay. Anyway, it's a good background. It really is. So uh, I bought, is, bought them in three different colors. So that that is a great tip. Mm -hmm. The white color and everything. It's not. Yeah. A, it, it's not a bib. It's a modified drool cup. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> drool rag. Uh, oh, Chuck. You know, looks like a priest. All, <laughs> all of us will need one sooner or later. <laughs> okay, well, my thanks to everyone. You all have a good evening, and we'll see you next week. It'll be the last one, and from there, we'll hope you all be enjoying your summer. And we're Very going good. fishing. Thank you. Bye, lines all. Bye, bye. Good night, everybody. Good night. Bye -bye. Good night.